Stan Brown has brought uh, great ideas and creativity uh, to us uh, for a number of years. Uh, Dr. Nair spoke about uh, the Cinderella effect with fruit trees in Central Europe. Uh, well, Stan Brown and, uh, and his colleagues have brought the Cinderella story of fruit trees to Central Asia. And, uh, and he has brought tremendous creativity, not only in the development of those uh, fruit trees and those businesses, but in the structure of how extension and business development and agricultural development happens, uh, contextualized to cultures and communities and some of the, the challenges to that form of development. So uh, Stan, it's a great privilege to welcome you back to the podium here at ECHO. Stan Brown. The apricot trees there turn orange in the fall, first of all. You know exactly where the wild apricots are because they're the ones turning orange. We started a development training program called the Central Asia Harvest Project. And our goal was to address needs of the small-scale fruit farmers of Central Asia through a farmer-to-farmer -farmer training program and development assistance. We were doing a general small farm training program, but we focused on fruit because it, we felt it had the longest term perspective in the region where we're working. When you get a, an orchard going for a farmer, you have a 30 to 50 to 100 year social contract with that family. And you're providing a multi-generational food source for them. This is an interesting picture following Dr. Nair's talk. It's our crew putting in a modern orchard. And behind you on the hills there, you see apple trees blossoming in the wild. And this particular um, phenomena that Vavilov had discovered and then uh, was uh, made famous uh, by one of Vavilov's uh, students called Aymak Zhangaliev, who has passed away. Aymak Zhangaliev was actually originally um, assigned to provide horses for one of Vavilov's expeditions. His father told him to um, help out Zhangaliev. Uh, to help out Vavilov, and uh, Zhangaliev took an interest and became one of Vavilov's students. And when the Soviet Union fell apart, and well, actually, before it fell apart, in the latter days of the Soviet Union, when they opened up in Glasnost, uh, Zhangaliev invited some American scientists uh, with the help of the USDA to go and make. Um, five different expeditions, collection expeditions, between 89 and 96. And particularly, they were focusing on one wild apple species that Vavilov and uh, Jangaliev had um, pointed out as being very important. The paper is still available online that summarizes this collection, evaluation, and utilization of Malus Siversi from Central Asia. The uh, links seem to be dead, although on some computers they might still be alive. On some browsers they seem to be dead, but the trip reports should still be available to show these expeditions and collections, some of which took place right up the valley from where we were. The list of the wild fruit and nut plants of Kazakhstan is tremendous. It includes the, the families of palm fruits, that is apple, pear, cotton easter hawthorn, mountain ash. But it moves on to other fruits. Uh, it moves on to berries, 
nuts, almonds. And we're going to take a little look at this. It was so impressive uh, as this became public that UNESCO um, called this area in the Tian Shan Mountains uh, a, a World Heritage Site. Tian Shan means heavenly mountains. In Chinese, and the Kazakhs have a joke that this in fact was the Garden of Eden, because if you take the Kazakh for apple and divide it up into two, two separate words, it means don't take, Alma. <laughs> of course, we don't know it was an apple, but the story's great. And indeed, just a tiny, tiny glimpse of what's out there. Nijetskaya, a red fleshed apple, unedible by itself, but it's become very interesting to breeders. Pistachios down south, pears, many of these critically endangered now for reasons that Dr. Nair pointed out, plums, almonds, cherries, and walnuts in this collection. But the one that has gotten the most attention seems to be Mala Sivirsi. Sivirsi means north, northern apple. And it's believed to be very vulnerable. The extensive forest stands that Vavilov found when he uh, first went there are largely and quickly disappearing under development. Now, credit goes to the government of Kazakhstan, who's put in policy to try and protect them. But there's other pressures. If you do a very, very cursory search for Malice Siversi, you get uh, 52,000 uh, responses. It has become very, very interesting and uh, resulted in these expeditions by Geneva Cornell under USAID, USDA sponsorship. And it has gone into their rootstock breeding program. They've collected, of course, from all over the world. But they have the largest collection of Kazakh wild apples outside of Kazakhstan itself, up in Geneva, New York. Uh, a 30-year apple rootstock breeding program has uh, made use of these rootstocks, these wild apples, to go into some of the new Geneva rootstocks that are now available, have been available for a number of years now to apple farmers in this country and other places in the world. It's very possible you've eaten an apple that has been grown on a rootstock that has a connection to wild Kazakhstan uh, germplasm. A very, very extensive collaboration, Cornell, Michigan State, Washington State, uh, those are the three big apple producers, of course, in the US, uh, Washington first, New York second, Michigan third. Uh, USDA and then Pennsylvania has its own uh, um, key apple production. And then 40 different scientists and collaborators around the world. Back in our project, we've had the privilege of interacting with uh, some wonderful people. On the right there, you'll see Yevgeny Mikhailovich Salnikov. He's a Russian breeder. And uh, the picture is taken in his own backyard botanical garden, where he just loves doing old-style breeding for berries, apples, pears. He's played around with the red-fleshed one, and it actually tastes wonderful. Other people in the world have also played around with that red-fleshed one. So far, it hasn't uh, quite made it into the market, um, but I think that's the marketing industry's problem, not the problem of the apple itself. We've collaborated. Our project uh, has been very uh, fortunate to, that's uh, in Russian, Harvest, Urajai, to partner in this 2006, 
2013 in situ on-farm conservation and use of agricultural bi biodiversity, specifically fruit crops. Five countries, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, and Uzbekistan, all of which share these mountain ranges where these fruit and nut crops exist. Our own Ahmed Mukhtarov uh, has participated directly as a farmer collaborator in this program. Here we have Fred Nyberg, um, a Washington State nurseryman who's demonstrating grafting techniques. And that's our nonprofit website. Um, please look it up. And this is a transition. The smallholder fruit farmer of Central Asia holds a key to preserving a wealth of on-farm biodiversity. How will a smallholder fruit farmer stay on the land? Now, many of you, maybe most of you in this room are practitioners. How's it going to happen? I'm a practitioner. And honestly, I sometimes shake my head. I don't know how it's going to happen. I've spent all my life begging for donated funds. And they're just not out there. One response is simply to share the problem with the world. Hey, it's disappearing. This biodiversity is disappearing. That top number there is the number of houses commissioned, new houses commissioned around Almaty City, uh, which used to be surrounded by apples. The 20% is the share of original wild apple forests remaining, 20% from earlier times, even Vavilov's time, Serious, seriously being decimated. But that's simply publicizing it. A farmer has to live. Gennaro Fazio of the USDA has said, if you lose it, it's gone. It's not going to be a source to draw upon. But that doesn't provide a solution. A very interesting article in The Economist last year pointed out that, using some of the numbers that uh, Dr. Nair uh, pointed out, the lion's share of food is produced by small-scale farmers. One thing that uh, is attached to that statistic is that most of these farm families are 50 years old, 50 years and older, and their kids don't want to farm. As you all know, there's this massive movement towards the cities. We work with rural farmers, as many of you do. Our answer to them is stay on the land. Mark Twain said, buy land, nobody's making more of it but everybody's moving to the cities, and they have to eat. This article points out that in the last 20 years, if you use a 20-year horizon, global agriculture is the best investment out there. It beats gold, it beats bonds, it beats stocks, it beats IT, it beats real estate. It beats virtually every other investment that's out there. And who's coming in? The title there refers to private equity, the barbarians. The point is there's money there. And if we're going to work with the system, if you can't beat them, join them, they say, but still focus on diversity, we have to have a partnership. We have to have a partnership. And so our response in our project is to continue to work with small-scale farmers and to continue to promote biodiversity, but to give the farmer a good return for their money. And so we started Middle Earth Orchards Group as a partner organization, partner company. It's a commercial company owned 
50% buy our nonprofit, but can also attract investment. We have a, uh, an apple tree nursery, and we're growing apples like grapes on vines, which is the modern way to grow apples. Um, a rose is a rose, right? If roses can grow on vines and trees, why not apples? The very interesting thing about this system is that you can get production in very, very quickly and you can experiment very, very quickly. You can try new varieties. You can try varieties, uh, even heirloom varieties, on this system. Reject the ones that will not um, bring a return and move on to others. So combining a modern system with an old goal that is protecting the di diversity. That's our theme verse. God has given us a wonderful, wonderful planet, and we have a lot to answer for. But he's also given us an unbelievable toolbox. One of those toolboxes lies in the market. A farmer is not going to be interested in preserving biodiversity until he knows he can earn a living on it. He's got to send his kids to school. He wants to improve his standard of living. There's money out there. The barbarians are at the gates. So let's us jump in there and work with these investors. Think big. God thought at an infinite scale when he created the universe. We don't have a clue. We do not have a clue. And even though we've seen tremendous, tremendous loss out there of diversity, the toolbox is still out there. The entire genetic spectrum of apples, as an example, is waiting for us to work with. One of the museums is here in Central Asia. IDEAS is not simply an agricultural organization, but we do have agricultural projects, and I'm, di I'm directing one of the key ones. But we're ready in IDEAS to take, idea take your IDEAS, and we're ready to work with entrepreneurs who are interested in this tremendous opportunity of combining small-scale farm development with very large-scale investment and bringing the two together. A rose is a rose and was always a rose. But the theory now goes that the apple's a rose and the pear is, and so's the plum, I suppose. Please come to our Meet the Speaker session, and we can go into more depth. Please uh, talk to me. We have a, a display back here. Um, I would love to share in more depth the um, tremendous beauty of Kazakhstan, more knowledge about the uh, diversity of fruit, and we'd love to attract some of you who are just addicted to the tropics to come up and work up in the temperate zones. There's direct flights from Almaty down to Thailand. You can go down there when the winter gets really cold, which it does, but come back up and work in our wonderful natural botanical garden. So please, this is just a tiny taste and that's all it was meant to be. We don't have time to go into depth. There's a tremendous amount of information out there on the web. And uh, please uh, dig up Vavilov's book. It's a great read and a tremendous story. Thank you.